Knife Show TNP. Still here. Sort of. Now, longtime subs to the Nut and Fancy Project, you know, all the guys and like the 11 girls I have in my viewing audience somewhere in the U.S. No, there's more than that, but there, there's not many. Mostly dudes. That's cool. You guys know that I love it when a gear item checks off all the boxes. And yeah, I have, well, as Brian Regan said, boxing that I want to check off. I want to check them off. I, you know, I have these requirements in SAWC and quality and speed and all this other stuff. I'm super stoked when I can bring it to tabletop and the boxes are pretty much all checked off. Because then I can kind of take out the stops, give a very excited review, genuine review. It's not TPA. It is what it is. And that's what you're going to get here. The knife I'm reviewing now, just buy it. No, I'm not in cahoots with Cold Steel. I never talked to those guys. I don't even know Steve Austin. Maybe in the future I'll meet you. I'm sure he's a great dude. I'd love to have him as a personal bodyguard. I know that much. <laughs> Maybe later. I know I, I'm, the point of all that, though, is no, it, this is a genuine review, genuine excitement on this, the Cold Steel Broken Skull. Collaboration with former wrestler or wrestler, I, sorry, I don't know the dude, Steve Austin. This knife checks off all the boxes for me. I mean, it is excellent. Excellent. Now, the one I have is in OD coloration. I think this is OD. You have a total of six colors you can get. That's the first box that is checked off. You got a tan option, OD this one, orange, blue, pink, gray, and a couple others. Well done, Steve. Well done, Cold Steel, that they gave the users options. That's the first and foremost. Uh, I really, it's hard to know where to start because it's just so excellent. I guess in philosophy of use, would we use this as a tactical blade, a fighting blade? Well, we can see at top side we have no jimping. I would really love to see a jimped version. Uh, I'll use the term violently jimped <laughs> because it could really lock in there. But high traction G10 sides, long real estate handle to grasp. I would say yes, you could definitely use it as a self-defense tool. Absolutely. EDC, yeah, you totally could. Now, if TMP Knife Nation says, well, you like the shorter blades for EDC, you are, you are correct, sir. Absolutely, I do. I mean, kind of like this. And just because I have it on the table, I saw a twitch, too. That's a perfect EDC blade. And you can see against a broken skull, it's, you know, that's a big knife. You know, it's not a small blade. But, dude, I got to tell you, it's, it's definitely EDCable. I'll bring in a competitive offering just to make a point. And I have integrated these into my systems for a long time. You guys should know the knife, the Almar Eagle. And this is the lightweight version. And then I got you the HD version, the heavy duty Almar Eagle in Saber Grind. I think that might be a better comparison against a Broken Skull because it, this, these two knives have similar construction, not identical. I EDC these blades all the time. This one just came out of my fanny pack. Yeah, it has a lot of wear on it. I just love it. It's OS 8 steel. And the point being is, can you EDC a larger blade? Absolutely. Uh, collectible. I don't know if they'll ever gain in value. The Cold Steel Steve Austin Broken Skull series, I would say probably not. They are a factory produced blade. I just don't see it. Uh, gift knife, other stuff I've talked about. Uh, the steel. It is XHP. DLC coated. So it has a powder metallurgy steel right out the gate. It's not OS 8. It's not 8A. It's not 420. It's not 154. It's a nice steel. Fine grain, even carbide distribution. Carpenter XHP is excellent. How's the edge out of box? How about perfection? It, it cannot be improved. I, I could not put a better edge on it myself, I don't think. Maybe slightly better, but it just, in the realm of it, wouldn't even matter. I really like the blackened blade on this. Very nice. 
Taiwanese produced. Uh, if you want to make it in the U.S., you're probably going to be looking at um, a buck fifty, buck sixty. Uh, it's going to come in Amazon. I went in there. It's running for eighty bucks. Totally worth it. So I love the clip blade. That's another big win for me in my excitement level. Checking a box on the Broken Skull by Cold Steel. And Steve, I don't know how much you had to say with this knife. I hope you had a lot to say, but dude, well done. Well done that the dude knows knives because the clip blade is super functional. It's a great defensive blade. It's a great utility blade. You really don't give anything up. Instead of these funky, goofy looking grinds with all types of weirdo serrations and grind patterns, you guys know I don't like those. I like classic, enduring designs that are useful, and the Broken Skull is exactly that. Here's your belly for slicing, food preparation, package opening, hopefully not defending yourself, but it could function that way as well. How about the speed? How about awesome? Awesome. Not assisted opening, but awesome. Now, when we talk about a manual deploying knife, we have to have a balance between retention, long time TM peers, you know what I'm talking about, tenacious, scar, where is that thing? It's over here, somewhere, one of those hands. It scarred me up. Perfect retention, and yet, and yet not so obnoxious that it's difficult to deploy. I just don't detect that at all. It's a perfect balance with a broken skull. Here's your stop pin. Triad lock, super strong. Oh, so excellent. Lock back mechanism. No volcano uh, issues at all on the dual ambidextrous thumb studs. Excellent, another box checked. There is some milling in the handle right here and I guess we'll look at the G10 handle now. Good traction. I would say eh, probably medium to high traction G10 on this Taiwanese produced knife. Can take it apart, adjust the pivot point should you need to. It is just a single sided adjustment on that. I kind of like the double sided ones a little bit better, but that's minor. And looking at the handle, by the way, do you notice anything or the lack of anything? Let me bring out my Olight S20 and you can see that there are no steel liners in there. <laughs> Hallelujah, Steve Cold Steel. Good job, dudes. I'm so happy to see that. I mean, we just have this ridiculous thing in the knife culture where I've said this before. I'll super uh, briefly say it again that everything has to be steel reinforced. We got to have steel in it. Got to have aluminum in it and create this huge heavy knife. We don't. For the POUs, the realistic use, this broken skull will see the torsional rigidity as it's put together. Thumbs up. I got no worries at all. And I do have a little bit of experience to draw upon, kind of like the no steel liner Almar Eagle. It's got no steel liners in there. It's my Carta. So it's probably even weaker than this. And uh, I've never had a problem with it. Perfect. I mean, they get it, man. That's just super excellent. Uh, so strength is good for what it's going to be used for. Let's take a look at the clip. This is going to be another checked box. It carries tip up. <laughs> another win. Hey, I like knives to carry tip down. Uh, I usually don't, and I will say usually. There are a couple that I do like carrying tip down. It just depends on the radius, you know, the formation of the handles. There's a couple, but this one definitely tip up. It is reversible for you lefties. It's really a great lefty choice. It's fully ambi. Right, you just don't lose anything. Here's the clip. Uh, I don't need to go out and mill that clip like I have on several other cold steel varieties because there's no spoon bill on it. It is blackened. It carries relatively deeply. You know, there's no lanyard hole in the back if you're concerned about that because they wisely used that real estate to mount the clip, and I much rather do what they did than the other way around. What a great knife. You hear that? The deployment of it? Oh, it's so sick. What a great knife. A value is super, super high. 80 bucks. Again, it's made in Taiwan, but that's where a lot of knives, I should say a lot of great blades are made. It's all about quality control. And I forgot to mention this, another uh, check. 
a checked box. It only weighs three ounces. What? Yeah, three ounces and forever, and I've never apologized for it. I think an EDC blade, even a tactical blade, can easily weigh four ounces and get the jobs done. So Cold Steel, Steve Austin, the collaboration, they're like, let's make it light, let's make it strong, let's put a big blade on it, thin stock, a great steel XHP blackened blade that carries tip up, reversible, fully ambidextrous knife, available in some beautiful, beautiful colorations. This one, guys, is easy for me to review. It's easy. This is a five-star blade. It's slam dunk. Buy one. Buy one. That is an unfancy review. See ya.